Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Bourbon Over Baseball. We're back again. Peter is back again, and we're talking about the worst team in baseball today. My fourth favorite franchise, the Baltimore Orioles, fallen on hard times after the uh, quasi-glorious Buck Walter years. Yeah, I mean, overall, they have a good history. I mean, I like the Brooks Robinson days and Frank Robinson days and Ripken and Alomar, but... These last couple years, not so good, and especially losing Machado, I don't know. I don't even know where they go from here. We're a long way from speed A on base 8, epic chart Adam Jones, and on base 9, <laughs> home run at 15, uh, Chris Davis. Yeah, and I don't know. You know this stuff better than me, but are there anyone in the minor leagues ready to like that they have that could make impacts? No. Okay. Well, maybe uh, Ryan Mountcastle. He, uh, he's an on-base nine homer at 17 in our league. Um, his, <laughs> my, uh, one of my good friends who plays, his name's Riley. He's another giant Orioles fan. He, he's a Cubs fan predominantly. I'm a Brewers fan predominantly. But we both really stand for the Orioles. And uh, he got them in our, our big league. And uh, he gives nicknames to all his players. So he loves hitting with Ryan Mount the curb, Mount Castle. Always yelled <laughs> as though he's Jim Gordon from The Dark Knight. Um, so yeah, I mean, Mount Castle's on his way. I think there's uh, there's a corner outfielder who's on his way as well, but it's it's bleak. Yeah, this it's team is, I think, the second lowest. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, let's see, fifteen forty total. It's okay. They are the lowest. So the Tigers are right above them. The Padres have to be down there. Let's see, 1540 Padres are... No, they're at 2250. Oof. That's because they actually have a decent bullpen and then two hitters in the 200s. But the Orioles, they Austin have... Hayes. Austin yeah. Hayes is their, their best prospect. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Another the... like on-base nine homer at 17 guy in ours. So he's, so he's got some pot. They've got a couple of potential power hitters. There's the guys that they got from the Dodgers, who I was really underwhelmed with for Machado. Um, so yeah, they could they're... maybe do something. I mean, the yeah. best player on the team right now is Valar, and he's at 210 points. They're so... going to have to Astros this. Oh, yeah, they have to. Um, wow. So let's start breaking it down. For the people at home, we got Caleb Joseph, the catcher. The uh, textbook in gear picture that you oh, love. Yeah. Oh and yeah, he looks fantastic. Yeah, so we had, I had a lot of trouble with the Orioles in terms of the color. the uh, The real orange for the Orioles is so dark and so yeah. rich. You could see it in the background of the card. It's 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 almost blindingly ugly. It's I, mean, I know this because yeah. I'm a I live in the city of Cleveland and I have the Browns you know in my backyard basically. Yeah. So um, that's not cool. So I faded it out a lot, um, like some of the other older uh, custom cards that I've seen, and uh, like the originals, and yeah. it, it came out a lot better, and just it lets the orange of the regular Orioles pop a little bit better. I but, agree with the pop, and I think it's uh, the perfect in between between the, the very vibrant orange that the and it's a richer vibrant orange yeah. that the Astros have. Oh yeah, but yeah I feel yeah. like that the like very bright orange would have been much more similar to that than this is. At the same time, it's kind of right in between. Uh, to me, it's between what the Astros have and the brighter faded orange of the Giants. So I yeah. think it's like a very good middle ground of our three orange teams. Yes. Um, but you're not drafting Caleb Joseph. You're not drafting... <laughs> half this team. <laughs> more than half, 90%? Yeah. If my buddy Kevin was on the podcast, he'd be saying nope to a lot of these, just like the Blue Jays one if you listen to. But... Caleb Joseph being a five uh, on base with one through six out, nothing Good exciting. Prospect, yeah. But, yeah. Um, so we'll go with uh, Hulk, Chris Davis, Chris with the C. Love um, this picture. Yeah. So the picture, uh, there was a guy on Facebook that uh, was trying super hard to find an image of Chris Davis that was not striking out. Um, I don't know if you ever found one. I sure as heck could not. That was nice. I'm pretty sure he just struck out and he's walking back to the dugout mad because that's basically all he does besides hit home runs because he's pretty strong. But in this card, as uh, Peter created, uh, we got a one through six strikeout and he also can hit home runs. But Brutal. Not, I, I mean, this is how you get a negative 2.3 war. Yeah, you do not want him 
Um, the next guy, Jonathan Villar, might be the only guy you could draft. Um, and he's probably draftable with the plus three second base. Um, but being the seven, ah, that's it's tough. Well, what's tougher because I the tougher with the NBA seven to me is the one to five strikeout. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. But the the real the real pain for me is that on base. I think he ended up being an on base five. Jonathan Scoop or shoop. to me, to me he's always <laughs> shoop shoop shoop. And so the Brewers swapped this on base seven. Yeah. With slightly better fielding for shoop, mm-hmm. and that that's hard for me to handle. Just yeah. emotionally. So I'm going to be picking as many brewers as I can and then picking <laughs> Valar and then being like, here's my team. It is the 2018. Yes. Brewers had that one trade not been made. And look, now we're better than the Dodgers. They're still not better than the Dodgers. I tried it. Yes. Well, and again, he, he's you know, the, not better. Well, he's the only again. He's the only draftable player being seven, which um, for people that go through all these cards, there are only two sevens on the team. No one higher. They did not get on base a lot. It's very, very tough. Yeah. Um, so Tim t- Beckman, former, yeah. uh, wasn't he the number one prospect for a while, way back in the day? Um, the I would race. not know. You that know that stuff Tim better Beckham? than me. I think he was the number one prospect in baseball for a couple of years and just never panned out. I mean, doesn't get on base enough. Nope. And now he's slow, too. Yeah. So he's, a, he's a nope. <laughs> Uh, moving along, Nunez, their other on base seven, and one of the the sneaky best looking cards on this team. Yeah, he looks he looks really crisp, and I like the obviously the any of the rookies I think have the with the rookie logo yeah. looks so sharp. Um, so I don't know what this guy's gonna become. Again, just just a lot of outs on all the batters charts. Yeah. Another one through five out. He he's if he's gonna get the advantage, I guess he can hit get on second at fourteen, but. Man, I mean, they're slow. They get out a lot. I don't really know what their strategy is. <laughs> yeah, and he, I mean, he's really hurt. I mean, he had 220 plate appearances. So that, it's tough to really yeah. project that much with them. And yeah, so we'll see what he what he becomes or what he ends up being. Like, he he had their, um, for their team, in the, he and Villar both had 336 on base percentages with them. That is 51 points worse than Manny Machado had with them. <laughs> they were the top. They lost the guy. Manny Machado was hitting 315 for them, which is higher than everyone else in their top their top 10 uh, hitters. So like the other nine in the top 10 guys in terms of played appearances for the team, higher than all their on-base percentages. Yep. His batting average, that's pathetic. That is really sad. So um, put, it, put in perspective. Yeah, Joey Ricard finally a guy that has low outs, but, uh, but he's a five on again base five. on so base and not that fat. He's undraftable, honestly. Yeah. Adam Jones breaks my damn heart. Well, what's funny I think about Adam Jones again? We got a six con- six on base here, negative um, one fielding. Yeah, so he uh, was the worst center fielder in baseball uh, last year according to defensive metrics, and um. Gets the C speed, even though he's one below B speed. He's not like super slow here, but I keep hearing all this stuff like, you know, the Indians want him, wow. or why is it no one picking up Adam Jones? Well, this is why. This is this is exactly why he, he's. I got. I've liked Adam Jones a lot. When he back in he's the heyday, he was a beast. Players. Yes, he was a beast. I mean, his 2012 card is an on base eight, speed A. I think he's a plus three center field, plus two in the corners. I think he doubled at 12. I think it was 12 to 15 double, like 16, 17, triple, Homer at 18, something like that. I might be hyperbolizing him at the moment, but he was epic. He was like a 400 point on base eight, which obviously I've been known to really love. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, he didn't have as many triples, but yeah, no, he was a, God, no, he was a 16 to 20 home run guy. Yeah, well, he was a five-tool him. player, if I remember correctly, when fantasy baseball. I mean, this was the type of the years when yeah. you were like looking at like Grady Sizemore type people. I mean, everyone wanted these he speed, an, power, fielding guys. I'm looking at my 2012 from 819 on base eight, 12 to 15 double, 16. Whew. Monster. <laughs> yeah, like, and he won the Gold Glove, so he had the plus three in center field. 
So he has fallen off. Now, again, I, I, I don't want him, if I'm the Indians, I don't want him, especially not in, in, in showdown. Um, so, But there's a reason. I think the showdown stuff kind of puts it into perspective when I see this stuff on Twitter saying, why isn't anybody drafting Adam Jones? Well, I'm looking at, like, why would I be drafting Adam Jones? Yeah. Yeah. Unless I'm getting a super good deal as because he's a backup and he's not, worth nothing. But Same goes for, well, Trey Mancini, big fall off from his uh, rookie season. Yeah, and I think they're still hoping that he'll turn up into something. I mean, on base percentage below 300. Yeah. I mean, he's Great got. Card, though. Yeah, so the picture is kind of funny. Uh, he was on third base in this picture, I, I, I assume, and um, and uh, looking kind of goofy. But uh, on base five here doesn't get out much, but uh, you're not drafting this guy. To me, he, uh, he got a chart and hit a double off it. And then everyone else struck out on their own charts. <laughs> and he was like, so he's, well, what do you know? He's looking at Chris Davis, and Chris Davis is like gr- uh, walking away pissed off. Daring contest. Yeah. Um, Mark Trumbo, another monster swinging guy that can't do anything besides like, you know, well, he usually strikes out, but we got a big fly ball chart here, but super slow. And another I'm example of your uh, your thing about showdown explaining why guys won't get signed. I think he wasn't he a free agent right after he hit the forty seven home runs with him. I'm and not then, I'm not exactly sure if that's what happened, but I'm pretty sure that he signed his contract with them. Yeah, because he's a three year thirty seven million guy signed through twenty nineteen. So he signed with them again after twenty sixteen. Wow, which was the year he had forty seven home runs. And people were like, how is the guy who had 47 home runs not a big splash guy when he got literally made like he's getting paid $12 million a year, basically? Yeah. A little more than 12 And it's like because in Showdown, this is an on-base six. Yeah. Like his 47 home run season is an on-base six. Homer like 13 yeah. to 20. Like, yeah, yeah he's he's got a big power range, but he's under 300 points. Yeah, and, and you need – you know, you're. Yeah, I guess you could hit a bunch of solo home runs like Chris Davis as well. But your whole team is this weirdly built around not getting on base, yeah. and sometimes they hit home runs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, Buck Showalter for a five-year stretch rolled out of his mind. Yeah, like he's just he's an amazing luck guy. <laughs> Showalter's like, give me five charts a game, I'm gonna hit four homers off. Of him. Yeah, exactly. And that's how I'm gonna win ninety-five games. Um, and he's for, great bullpen. Yeah. Um, so you got Jace Peterson next, another undraftable player, being a nope. five. Maybe you could bench him, um, you know, because he's got the plus two third base and speed A20, but but probably not. Um, Chance, Sis- sucks. Chance Cisco's not he's good. He's a prospect, not it, Caleb Joseph. Oh, okay. Chance, Chance is someone they're hoping develops, but... Uh, Again, no, another bad. big strikeout chart here. I could not find a picture of this one though that was clean enough in the catcher mode. So he, he got the bad. One eighty one. Yeah. One eighty one. God. Not good. Bless his heart. <laughs> so then we'll move over to the pitching staff, which um, sadly doesn't get any better. But I had to redo a couple cards because uh, there are some players on this team that Peter adores, and one of them don't is, you dare disparage Dylan Bundy. Is big bad Dylan Bundy. <laughs> This so, this card broke my heart ugh. to to make chart wise. He was the second best prospect in all of baseball when my friends and I started doing the minor league stuff in 2013. Mm-hmm. His God, his ceiling was a tier one pitcher. Like they were like, this is a can't miss. They were talking about him the way they were talking about Otani when he came into the league. And I'm not saying that I made. A control five, one to seventeen out <laughs> Dylan Bundy that gave up basically a two thousand Pedro Martinez version wow. of Dylan Bundy for my custom league to be like, This is Dylan Bundy. This is what he's gonna be in twenty eighteen, back in twenty thirteen. But God, he has been a letdown. Yeah, and I can't tell too much like I, I just feel like everybody in the Orioles is doing bad because when they move to other teams, they seem to be doing okay. So yeah. I don't know what's going on, but Dylan Bundy, I think, is this big prospect, and I still think he's talented, but he's just getting the one control here, and he gives up the home run. So something is wrong. Come to Milwaukee, wrong. Dylan. Come to Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd take him as a, a flyer on him in uh, in uh, Cleveland. 
Um, Andrew Kashner, another one control that gives up a home run. So, you, I mean, these are not people you want. This is a terrible, terrible team. Um, we'll talk about David Hess real quick. Um, who another guy gives up a home run. This one's a yep. zero control. It's bad. So you're talking about three of their four starters give up the home run. So, again, you're not drafting these, but, Peter, you're going to have a really tough time with this in your showdown league with your teams. They're going to get freaking rocked. Oh, yeah. This, I, is, this, was, this was the biggest problem in our year one when we just we had literally 18 teams yeah. tanked. Because it was like we could sell out for prospects and the other teams just went in all in. And we did like real baseball, no salary cap for year one. Uh-huh. Like the Astros ended up being close to 7,000 points. Wow. And uh, everyone loaded up and other teams loaded down. And in our league, the Orioles are still suck. <laughs> so did the Royals. Because like you have to get really lucky. And the top prospects have pretty good floors. Everyone else doesn't. And it's like, oh, wow. Like, I end up replacing uh, Andrew Kashner on this team, who's maybe someone you could use. No, no, Alex Cobb. Alex Cobb on this yeah. team. Alex Cobb is only one. <laughs> yeah, like, he'd be an affordable number four starter. Yes. And this is, this is actually, in my opinion, probably the, the most draftable player on the team just because. A three control one fifty nine is kind of like I said a safe, a safe yeah. player. Like you're just not going to get too yeah. hurt with them, and he's and he's cheap, like in yep. terms of a league. So he's probably going to find some spots, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Miguel Castro zero no. reliever. You don't want him. Michael Givens, who used to be I think really good, he's okay here. I mean three yeah. control one through sixteen, not bad, but not great either. I think the one that's going to be really controversial for people, and if I'm an Orioles fan, this is the one card I'm looking forward to. I'm pretty sure he's really good in the clutch cards. Like I think he's a control five, one to 18 out. And I know it's different with how high up they go, but mm-hmm. that still sounds amazing to me. Um, and he was really, really good in my league last year. He's at control six, one to 16 out. So he's a very talented reliever, and that's Richard Blyer. People are going to be like, he had an ERA under two. How was he a control three, one to 16 out? Well, he pitched in 30 innings, and our reliever rankings are done entirely by whip. And he had a 1.224 whip, which yep. was not that great. In fact, it ranked, if I find our reliever tab here, very... Uh, you know, Zach in tier four, he was oh, he's below Michael Givens, first of all. He ranked seventieth of all the relievers in the set and whip. And so he fell into tier four as a control three. And uh, that was the way the cookie crumbled. He was he was well out from being a guy with dominant stuff, and he got very fortunate to strand enough runners to get that one point nine three ERA because his whip did not reflect that and that's what we use for relief pitchers yeah and i will tell you i i, I play clutch and have played clutch and and a five is good um yeah. the highest they go is like seven i think and that's like trevor or they did like andrew miller last year was a seven yeah. and they've done like throwbacks like trevor hoffman so maybe, maybe yeah. they've done eight I, I don't think so but a five is very good so um and that many outs just yeah. seems good so this one i mean he's draftable definitely here with the three one through 16 out but yeah I think people are going to expect a guy who's a early reliever you take, a foundational piece of a bullpen, and he's just not bad in this set. And then you got Mike Wright, who has the odd two innings of pitching, but uh, only one control, so obviously I don't think anybody should draft this guy. And then lastly, Tanner Scott, uh, another rookie, uh, another one control, one through 16 out. Just It's just hard. So. To sort of recap the Orioles, I think the most draftable player is probably Alex Cobb, and maybe you would draft Michael Givens or I think Villar. Richard Blyer. Okay, so or Villar. I mean, Villar's a guy. I'll pick. Man, they're just they're just they're just a rough team in general. Yeah. Again, there's no on base eights or higher on the team. A lot, a lot of strikeouts, a lot of outs, a lot of charts go up to six and five. There's a lot of home run power on this team. There's it seems no to be... control over three either. Yeah, they're just... 
No control twos. There is no control twos. Oh. Yeah. But no four or five or sixes either. <laughs> nope. Uh, there's also four ones. Yeah, and, and a lot multiple of home runs. Zeros. So they hit a lot of home runs, but they also give up a lot of home runs because their pitchers all give up home runs. Yeah, um, so again, I don't think anybody's drafting many players from there, if any. Um, and I, again, I feel sort of bad, but I sort of don't at the same time. It's just the, the Orioles aren't 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 good. This um, is the product of Astro Ball. Yeah, um, and hopefully soon it'll be Orioles Ball to get back to where you like them. But yeah, this is what happens when you tank. And try to get um, into the to get prospects to, to be able to do anything. Yep. Um, and it, I mean, they might not even be helped by a minimum salary because they're spending so much money on Chris <laughs> Davis <laughs> and Adam Jones previously and Mark Trumbo and. Ugh. So I only have one of their players. I think in my top three hundred. And it's uh, so for people that don't know us, me and Peter have top 300 boards. It's I know we're, we're uber nerds here, people, but we, we play for keeps. We play for pink slips. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the Jonathan Villar is my 267, 62nd ranked player out of 300. I uh, made the cut. He made the cut. So, yeah, I, I don't project a lot of these Orioles to make it. I don't think people probably should draft them. But, you know, let us know what you think. You know, maybe you're mad about Mike Wright and you can yell at Peter or about Richard Blyer, I mean, and yell yeah. at Peter. But um, I think people are going to look at this and go, yeah, that's pretty much the Orioles. And they feel bad and they're just going to be like, when's the next National League team coming out? Because that's all we care about. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the, the Mariners. Oh, yeah. So so for the AL, Mariner we have the Mariners eventually. and the twins Rangers. Some guys. Yeah. There's a couple on each team. There's a couple on the Twins. Um, the Tigers have like one player that's decent. Royals, not so much. Oh, they have Witt, Merrifield. Um, Twins somehow got rid of, like, all their starting pitchers last year. Yeah. So their rotation is decimated. Yeah. So there, there are it's a handful. I think, the, I think the Mariners are the most exciting team left for yeah. the AL, and I'll probably hold them to last, um, trying to get some of these terrible teams out. But, again, I think everyone's going to be looking forward to the National League to see what more Peter has. I know he has some fun – uh, teams yeah, I mean, coming like, up. The Pirates are surprisingly good. Yep. Uh, like, I forgot. I, I was looking at them and just like, oh, wow, like their lineup. All right. We got on base nine, on base 10, couple eights, four, seven. Oh, their lineup has no one. Like, they can they can go with all sevens or better. That's yeah, incredible. I have two of their players in my top 75 people. Um, actually, I have exactly. three of their players in my top 100. So there are some people... And you guys will get see what we're talking about next week, um, or, or probably in, yeah, in about a week or so. Um, but uh, is, is that the next team for you or no? Probably not. I mean, I've been okay. working on the Phillies. So that's just the a big Mets tease, have been everybody. Coming along, yeah. I'm <laughs> between the Pirates, Mets, and Phillies. Yeah, I think I know some people on Twitter are really eager to have you get the Mets, but I'm actually excited for. Um, actually, I'm excited to see the Phillies from you because I'm excited to see the pennant run Phillies that will. Yeah. become the real Phillies. <laughs> Man, there's well, that's same with the Mets. Yeah, oh yeah, very true. So those two teams are really fun to see sort of um what their strong suits and weak suits are on their team and then what the pennant is going to do to the pennant runs or what they're going to do to their teams. Yeah, it's uh that's that's going to be really cool. So maybe I'll hold off on the Mets and Phillies just cuz be fun to just meld those guys right into their posts. Yeah. Um, with that, everybody, that is the Orioles. I hope you guys <laughs> enjoyed listening and stay tuned for what Peter has next. Thank you, Peter. Yep.